From the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Inflation falls again in December to 6.5% on an annual basis, and that makes six months in a row. Has the Federal Reserve finally got prices under control? And does this mean the United States economy can skirt a recession in 2023? Plus, Joe Biden's aides discover a second batch of classified documents, this time in his garage at his home in Wilmington next to his Corvette. The president isn't making life any easier for Attorney General Merrick Garland as he decides how to handle the dueling document cases of Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Welcome, Joe Sternberg and Kim Strassel, my editorial page colleagues. I'm Paul Gigo. Let's talk first about this inflation number falling to 6.5 percent in December on an annual basis. Actually, prices fell overall 0.1 percent in the month. And uh, President Biden leapt on the good news. Let's listen. Today, we've got some good news. Good news about the economy. For the sixth month in a row, inflation has come down. Measured over the last 12 months, it has fallen 65 percent. That's down from 7.1 percent the month before. It's down from 9.1 percent this summer. Inflation is now at its lowest level since October of 2021. When we look at the at the just the last three months, we see that inflation fell to 1.8 percent on an annualized basis. It's down from more than 11 percent in the first three months of last year. So the data is clear. Even though inflation is high in major economies around the world, it's coming down in America month after month. He's right. They're coming down. The prices are coming down. Of course, they were the worst inflation in 40 years for most of last year. And 6.5 percent is hardly anything to cheer about since it's still very high price level increases and imposing a lot of pain on people. But is President right to crow here? And are we out of the woods on inflation? Well, I mean, look, you can't blame a guy for trying. And if I were the uh, president, I would try to claim credit for any uh, good economic news I could find to. But I think that the main thing that's happening here is that, first off, prices writ large are not actually coming down so much as they are rising less quickly than they were before. I mean, that's always something that becomes a little misleading about these discussions about changes in the inflation rate, because it is a rate of increase. So if it is now 6.5%, that means that it is not increasing as fast as 9% percent, which we had over the summer. But people are still paying much more for things than they were a year ago. And that rate of pace is still much above the Federal Reserve's 2% target. So I think that's an important thing to keep in mind here. And the other thing is that the improvement in inflation, such as it is, has not been evenly distributed among every part of the economy. Most of this is a result of energy prices actually coming down over the past month, which is definitely good news for American households, especially people who have to drive anywhere or heat their homes this winter. But you still have prices going up for a lot of other categories. I mean, there were more increases on food, both the food that you get at the grocery store and what you eat at restaurants, you know, other forms of consumption, excluding food and energy were up. So I think that it's better than it was, but we're still far from being out of the woods here. On the point about prices still going up, services outside of uh, energy services were up 0.5 percent a month and have still 7 percent year over year. And shelter, housing, rent, uh, owner-occupied rent which is what the Consumer Price Index uses as a substitute for home prices for housing is 0.8% up in the month. Very high. That's 7.5% over the year. Now, some people think the latter will go down as housing prices have been falling and that will flow through to the owner-occupied rents figure. But Kim, I guess the uh, $80 question is, how will the Fed read this? And will it pat itself on the back and say, we've got this thing down? Or, well, we're on the right path, but we got to keep going on it. Yeah, just a little bit more about the big pivot in the focused services, too, because it was quite striking. You saw it across the board, and that really did seem to be a big part of the fact that core inflation actually picked up in December from November a little bit. And that's what has people worried. But, you know, hospital services up 1.7 percent. 
pet services up, hotel rooms, sporting event tickets. And we can talk about this. This probably has something to do with labor prices. And that gets to questions about wage gains. But in terms of the Fed, I think, look, there's going to be a lot of pressure on Jerome Powell to hold steady now, not raise rates any further, sit tight and see what happens and suggest that we're now over the hump. And if you just put things on autopilot for a while, that things are going to get better. I doubt that's going to happen because of those core numbers and some of these things that you see picking up as in services. One thing that might change is, you know, we obviously had had some pretty hefty rate hikes, including 75 basis point hikes. And a lot of economists are expecting that, though, while Jerome is likely to keep raising the rates a little bit. Because again, remember too, one of the general rules when you get in an inflationary situation like this is you don't necessarily get inflation under control until the funds rate is equal to the inflation rate. Right now, we're at about 4.25, 4.5. I think that some economists are hopeful that if he does continue to raise rates, or I should say some on Wall Street are hopeful that if he continues to raise rates, that they're going to be more like quarter point hikes. But given Jerome Powell's determination on this lately to get this under control, I don't think that we're done seeing rate hikes yet. Yeah, I agree with that, Kim. I think he's going to go probably to maybe a quarter point in the uh, January 1st, February 1st Federal Open Market Committee meeting. He might slow to that pace as opposed to 50 basis points the last time they met. And then, as you mentioned, four in a row of 75 basis points. So they might slow down, but I think they're still going to head up towards five. And all the more so because the underlying job market is still very strong. We haven't had any real notable increase in uh, weekly jobless claims, Joe. And while there are have been layoffs in certain industries and certain companies as uh, corporate profits fall, there's still really no evidence of recession so far. Yeah, I think this is actually a big unspoken part of the dilemma that Jerome Powell and the Fed in general face right now, which is that what they have been doing over the past six to nine months seems to be working, but no one is sure exactly why. The Fed's classic theory has been that there's a relationship between the job market and inflation, so that if you have inflation in a very tight job market such as we've had over the past year or two, the way that you fix the inflation is by trying to create more slack in the job market. And in the extreme form, that can take the, the form of higher unemployment or even an economic downturn or a, a slowdown of some sort. Now, the oddity here is that the Fed's tightening cycle does seem to be helping bring inflation somewhat more under control than it was before without creating some of these negative effects in the labor market and the, the broader economy that the Fed itself probably thought they were going to have to achieve in order to control the inflation. Now, I think that you can make a good argument that this means that their models are wrong, that the way they understand the economy is mistaken, but it would take them years to sort that out, and they have to be making policy right now. And so I think that a big complication isn't necessarily going to be that the job market is good or the economy seems to be relatively resilient. That actually eases some of the political pressure that Powell otherwise would face to ease up on the break before he had finished slaying the inflation beast. But I think that it does create this problem where the Fed is going to have to act without really having a good understanding of how what they are doing is actually affecting the economy. Well, but politically, the uh, strong labor market and the fact that we're not, uh, don't seem to be tipping into recession gives Powell political running room. He's getting criticized by Elizabeth Warren and some Democrats for risking a recession. But if there isn't one, he's not facing any kind of the pressure that Paul Volcker faced, for example, in the early 80s of where he raised rates decisively to break the back of inflation. So it's possible we're getting a, at least a, possibly we could avoid a big economic crack up here, which was, of course, the great fear when inflation was running at 9%. And just one other bit of good news, if I can uh, offer it in the monthly price data, real earnings, that is real earnings after inflation rose in December by 0.4%, second month in a row They've risen. That was 0.3% in November, which means that the decline in real wages, which is your actual purchasing power, was only down 1.7% over the last 12 months. Still awful, means a real pay cut. 
but it means that uh, maybe if we can get inflation down and consistently keep have it falling, we can have real wages rise. Yeah, and that would be great to see. Now, I would note that Powell does indeed face some pressure. I saw when the wage numbers and jobs numbers came out, he was shellacked by the usual groups of worker advocates talking about the fact that wage growth had declined some from its peak in March, came in 4.6% year over year. And of course, that increases the whales from folks like Elizabeth Warren, that to the extent that Powell continues to increase rates and he puts further pressure uh, downward on wage increases, that this hurts workers. And and I agree that is a a terrible problem, but he's going to at some point have to get this wage price question under control. And that's a big thing that the Fed is watching too. But I also agree with you that so far, the Fed is handling this so-so and in warding off a recession and in getting some of these numbers headed in the right direction, it's building a little bit of a firewall around them to continue doing the right actions. We will see if the White House and Democrats can keep from engaging in a targeted, unrelenting campaign campaign against him if they understand what is good for them. But I think he's actually done himself a favor here by being aggressive when he was last year. <music> 